Gepard C is very famous for their Cinewoops. And the most recent one, the Cinebot 30, has got a lot of attention because it can carry the DJI-O3. It has some cool lights around the frame. The frame is pretty hard and pretty resistant to crashes. And today I want to build one from scratch so you know how to do it if you want to do it. Or you can also use this video to repair your Cinebot in case that something happens. I'm gonna try to keep the build as close as to manufacturing because again, I want you to use this to repair your drone in case uh, something happened in the future. So I'm gonna get here the frame for the Cinebot 30. I have uh, 6S motors. These ones are 1804-2450KV from GEPRC, of course. I'm gonna get the same flight controller that they use. This one is the F722-45 amp. And the idea with having exactly the same parts is that I'm going to be able to just download the CLI from GEPRC, put it in here, and everything will work kind of directly. I don't have to fiddle around with the configuration. For the VTX, I'm choosing to do a wax nail. First, because it's a little bit cheaper than an O3. Second, it's the same process if you were using an O3 or a Vista. The frame assets all of these cameras and all of these VTXs, so process-wise, it's not different. And then I'm enjoying quite a lot flying my walk nail system. It's the one that I'm using the most lately. So I'm going to have that in this build. And of course, I'm gonna be adding an Express LRS receiver to my drone because again, that's what I'm using lately the most. One of the key selling points of this drone is that they build it to be easier or they created to be easy, easier to build than before. The Cinelogs were really good. The Cinelog family is really good, but when you have to open it to do something, it gets a little bit complicated there. Now we have this one where, if I understand correctly, I'm going to be able to connect everything around the VTX on the frame and one plate and the flight controller on the other plate together with the motors and then kind of just sandwich together and close it. So let's see how that goes. So the bottom plate has different holes depending on the VTX that you're gonna be mounting. In our case, I'm gonna be using the box nail and it's going to fit like this, like in diagonal. If you see, I don't think you can see the holes, but anyway, they, they have a specific hole for this VTX here, so find some M2 screws and screw this to the bottom plate. This TPU part is pretty interesting because it's designed so you can fit the antennas and then just drag them in. I think it's a pretty cool idea. They did a good job here. The frame has some openings to for the flight controller USB port and for the binding button of the VTX. So let's just make sure that we are aligning things in the right way and then we don't have to redo something later. So if you see here, if I have the VTX all the way down, there is almost no way to reach the button there, the binding button. So most probably I'm gonna have to put something, some spacer, so it comes a little bit higher and then I have access to the button. But it will fit here, antennas are there in good place. This is gonna come here on the back. So we are in the right direction. If you use a screw with a knot directly in, then the screw won't be moving up and down and it should make your life easier when installing your VTX.
Okay, after a few backs and forth, I figure out the right direction. So we have it here. Uh, difficult to see, but we kind of have access to the binding button there. There. So at least we have it on the right side. We have the antennas in place. This is gonna come somewhere here, like this. And the camera is going to the front. So we are in the right direction. Hmm. Actually, one thing here that I see, this drone has a LED around the frame, which is gonna come through the front side here so I can connect it inside there. I think I have to put that in place before screwing the bottom plate, otherwise um, it's gonna be a difficult job to do here. So let's do that first. This is the LED, it has some glue on the back, but before we glue it to the frame, I wanna make sure that we, we have it the right way. And the right way is gonna be like this, like the cables are gonna come uh, from the front and then it could be that we have here this line here yeah probably and then just go around and come on the other side and finish here so I'm gonna solder the the back for for the LEDs before I start doing this so I have it done and it's easier to work later this is the LED back, which is going to transform the electricity from the battery to whatever this takes. I'm guessing that it should be something like five volts. And you can see here the output, the positive and the negative, and then the input with a B, which means that it comes from the battery. So battery plus, battery minus, and the signal in the middle. Let's put all this in place before I glue the LEDs to the frame and I'm going to do something else that is on the on the back side I'm going to have one of these cables that I can plug and unplug because when we open the drone I don't want any cable there like holding the two parts of the frame and with a connector like this it's going to be easy to disconnect whenever I want. here signal in the middle negative down positive up output so let's just shrimp wrap it and then we can proceed to put it in the frame So as I was saying, we were gonna put it from the front. Oh, actually, I, I removed the tape too much and I can see that the LEDs are actually 12 volts. So that's the reason why you need this cable to be connected to the battery and not to a five volt pads, for example. 
So you need 12 volts to, for these LEDs. The frame is a little bit transparent, so this light, it's gonna go through. I believe that you cannot change the color, it's just one fixed color. When you start putting these LEDs, start from this side, there is like a little bit of a hole there that is specific to where the cables connect to the LED. I think that's the best place so it finish right on the other side. Now we can install the bottom plate. We have this little piece that goes in, in between the two plates for the camera here like this. So we have to be careful to put it before we close both sides. The camera is inside now the, the metal, the aluminium plates and it looks quite protected there. In the case of the avatar system, the plug is on the VTX side, which means that for this frame, the plug is here under this, and I will have to plug it before screwing up the bottom plate. I thought that I was, since this was a plug, I was going to be able to remove it and plug it back whenever I open the drone, it doesn't look like it's gonna be that easy because this plastic part here is kind of on the way. I'm guessing that this is for the receiver, I'm not sure, but it's on the way and it's not gonna be easy to unplug and plug this if I'm opening the drone. Anyway, I have to put it before I close or be before screwing the bottom plate, so let me do that now. We have this Stand off. There will be one here, one here, and one here in the front. Now I believe we have the button plate ready. We have some cables to solder here for the VTX later. We have a cable to connect for the LEDs. But the antennas, the VTX antennas are in place, the cable is in place, the button is somehow reachable for binding, and the camera is in place. Uh, what I can see is that using these 12 millimeter screws is gonna be very tight on the top. And when you're gonna have like the battery strap here, uh, I mean, you're gonna have to open the FC to get the strap first. Otherwise, it's gonna be very complicated to get it there. But since I wanna have it in place to solder everything, I'm just going to first start like this, solder the motors, then open a little bit and get my strap. So I can work flat on my desk with this board. So Gearparsi has included this TPU for to be sandwiched between the motor and the top plate. The thing that you have to make sure is that the screws that you're gonna use, they don't go through the motor and get into the, the, the wires. Uh, the motors comes with two lengths. I believe the short ones will work better than the long ones. I'm gonna check, but I'm gonna screw them and see that they don't, they don't reach the, the wiring of the motor. Otherwise, you're gonna have a short circuit. The motors are in place with this plastic in between. I chose the small screw so I didn't reach anything inside the motor and create any kind of short circuit. Now let's cut the cables to the right length and solder the motors to the flight controller.
I actually normally start soldering the, the power pad, but I started with the motors this time. But let's do the power as well. It's up to you, but you can decide if you want the cables to go through this hole here and then you get the cable up here. I'm going to leave it like this because I did it already like this. I don't want to desolder and solder and I'm just going to zip tie the cables strongly here so they, they support crashes. The Gepard CCLI is going to use T5 to control the LEDs. So I'm going to connect the yellow cable that I have here to T5 and that's going to be the user one in the configuration. So here's a challenge with wax nail. Wax nail is not recommended to be used with 6S. This drone is 6S. Uh, normally the ideal situation will be to use a nine volts or 12 volts uh, pad from the flight controller to power the wax nail unit. This flight controller doesn't have another nine or 12 volt pad, which means that I can use only the battery and the battery is 6S and I shouldn't use 6S directly here. I'm going to add another back so I can have nine volts clean and be sure that I'm not gonna break my, my wax now. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that that's the way that Gepard C does, but at least I want to keep on the safe side. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a cable that connects on the on the DJI connector of the board, which has VVAT, and that cable will go to the back, and the back will go to the wax nail. So let's do that. So last thing to do is to connect the receiver. I'm gonna use Express Lores. I have this with the ceramic antenna steel torn, if I should use a regular one or this. But I think I'm gonna go with this one just to try. In any case, changing the receiver is very easy, so if I want to use a regular, with a regular T antenna, it's just to change something. Okay, let's go for, one of the last steps will be, or the last step soldering will be to solder the receiver. Let's do that. Now what's left is to build the top plate where the camera uh, is uh, and then put the parts together and let's see how everything is in the end. Top plate is ready. Now let's sandwich everything and close the drone. Well, in all honesty, it was not easy to close the drone. I have to put the things on the side and you know rearrange a little bit. 
especially the capacitor. I had to rearrange it in a way that fit. But here it is, closed. Now we have to connect it to Betafly, configure, put the props. Okay, last part, propeller. This drone is set up as a props out, and then you get, you see the propeller here, you see the way that is, you don't see it, but you have to put it on the direction that you want. And this is important part. The motor is upside down, but you're gonna be pushing anyway down. So when you are putting the propellers, you have to think about the drone like this, which means that this, this one is gonna move this way. Uh, this one is the same. And then this one's here. And that's it. We have our Cinebot complete. Now to fly and test it. Thank you for watching. See you soon.